Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm going to be reviewing a new FDM 3D printer. This one is from Creality. They are kind of the, the market leader in FDM printers internationally, and this is their new flagship, the K1 Max. Alongside the K1 printer, they announced and released earlier this year. This is the larger version, and it's really Creality's uh, answer to, honestly, the Bamboo Lab series of printers that really revolutionized, revolutionized and popular popularized Core XY uh, printing for uh, the hobbyist community and made 3D printing, I think, more accessible and more exciting. I, we love our bamboo printers here at Tested. Uh, the Core XY design, which I covered previously when we reviewed the Bamboo Labs X1C, uh, was really um, kind of founded by the Voron group, open source group, where you can uh, download project files and build your own massive, really fast moving 3D printer. Uh, and the hallmark of the design, of course, is this belt system for the X and Y axis. So you have these high torque stepper motors in the back that then allow uh, the head here, the extruder and the hot end uh, through these belts really move extremely fast. Now that works in, um, in association with what's called input shaping. So there's an accelerometer inside this hot end, inside the extruder, and when you run the printer through a calibration process, when you first get it set up, it starts vibrating and it detects the different resonance frequencies at the different speeds in which it can move, and then through its firmware, and in this case it's using clipper firmware, it will then compensate for those vibrations uh, so that it can move reliably at speeds of up to, they say, 600 millimeters per second. By comparison, you're talking about most standard bed slingers top out at 100, 200 millimeters per second. Here, you're talking about four to five times as fast potentially when you're running, running that fast. In practice, you're never really running it that fast. Let's talk about some of the hardware here though, because the form factor, the design of this really, really harkens to the Bamboo Labs series of printers, including some of the more modern sensor technologies they've built in. Uh, one, the aluminum frame here, this is pretty solid, has glass on three sides, actually a glass top as well. I don't have it installed on here. Uh, for a reason that we'll talk about later on, uh, but it comes working pretty much out of the box. There's very little insulation. You're not putting together this frame. Um, you're attaching the touchscreen interface. You're doing a little bit of setup on the build plate and unlocking it. Uh, and then once you're running that filament through that tube in the back, you're printing in half an hour to an hour of getting this out of the box. And that not only is that convenient and great for setup and getting this working in your house, uh, but having this as a solid frame also increases the durability and stability of those prints. It does have four rubber feet as well that you can put this on to minimize those vibrations because once this printer gets moving at those max speeds, it does do a little bit of shaking as you've seen with other Core XY printers. Uh, but the other modern set of features and sensors are you have a camera system in the corner here. It's basically a webcam that allows you to remotely monitor your prints, which I love having that in the Bamboo Lab series of printers. Love using it here on the K1 Max as well, uh, as well as a AI LiDAR sensor here. So if you're using Creality Print, which is their slicing suite of softwares, uh, you can enable AI, AI LiDAR sensing. So before every print, I'll do a calibration pattern on the left side here and then run a laser over it to make sure that first layer is, uh, is, is proper and it can continue printing on. Now, as of the time when we're recording this, the firmware isn't updated to a point where I feel like we're getting a ton of benefits from that AI LiDAR with slices and prints I've done with Crowley Print compared to ones I've done with third-party slicers like Orca Slicer, which is my current favorite for using uh, on the K1 Max. The print quality has been essentially the same with the LiDAR on and with the LiDAR off. So you don't, I don't feel like you have to use Creality Print because the interface I think isn't for everyone. There's still a lot of features that they could improve. Uh, there's also auto bed leveling, which is kind of a standard now for printing for printers. Um, but instead of using a sensor in the in the hot end, there are actually some strain gauges, three of them underneath the bed itself. And so 
Before every print, I'll run through a calibration test to make sure your bed is level, and a, uh, a sensor in the extruder allows for uh, the measurement of the Z height. So depending on what bed you have on here, it's gonna be your first layer is gonna be perfectly flat on that first bed. I had basically no problems with the first layers of any of the prints I ran on the K1 Max. So incredibly reliable, uh, not only using Creality's, PLA and their hyper PLA for the max speeds, but also some generic PLA as well. Uh, in this case, using Matter Hacker's build series of PLA. I love those three kilogram spools. Um, we'll also talk through some of the other features that you might see. Uh, this runs off of three uh, rods, these through uh, three lead screws for uh, moving up and down the z-axis, of course, with the core XY design. Your X and Y axis stays up here at the top. Uh, and then you have a series of fans as well. There's a fan, of course, on the extruder and hot end. Uh, there's also a fan in the back here, which uh, includes a filter. So if you're printing ABS, for example, and you want to have uh, the glass on top and contain temperature on the inside of the build volume, uh, any of that air that comes out will go through that filter so you don't have those nasty ABS fumes. Um, but they also added a third fan here, and this blower is really nice because it blows right off of the top of the print bed when it's doing that first layer. So your first layer adhesion is and it's pretty much perfect. You're not getting any of that pilling or weird stringing with that first layer. Uh, I never had issues using that. So I really like that extra fan here as well. Now, unlike the Bamboo Lab series of printers, there is no multi-material option. And unlike the Prusa line of printers, there's no option to have multiple hot ends either. You're, this is a printer to print with one type of material, one filament at a time. And the filament rolls are in the back here, um, which I think I could see people designing uh, other, other spool holder mounts to, uh, to not necessarily have it in the back um, because you might have this against a wall. It's a little bit of an inconvenient spot, I think. Uh, but you're also manually funneling your filament up through this tubing into uh, the extruder and hot end with every filament swap. And so I have gotten a little used to the automatic material switching, the convenience of the Bamboo Lab prints of e being able to very easily plop on a, a spool and have it feed through and select it in the software. This is more of a traditional filament printer in which you're just manually doing that process. And it wouldn't be so much of a hassle if I didn't run into issues with the filament feeder. So you can see the tube here, not only does it go up the back and it makes a hard right turn into the printer, but it does a curve here. And right before it gets into the extruder on the hot end, it has a pretty sharp angle that goes down. And that's one of the reasons I have the glass top off is because I noticed when the glass top was on, it would push down on the tubing and kind of make that angle extra harsh. One that gave me errors when I was feeding the filament in, uh, loading filament in after extracting it. It wouldn't latch on even when, you know, of course using the metal latch at the top. Uh, and two, it, I had uh, some errors with the gearing and the extruder not catching properly and having filament get stuck in that extruder. So handful of times, three times with this printer, I have had to take apart the extruder and remove stuck gearing in, uh, stuck filament in that gearing system. Not the greatest experience there, uh, but this extruder does solve some of the problems I've read folks have had with the first K1 line of printers that shipped uh, earlier this year. Um, and so all the K1 Max printers has the new hot end, which theoretically solved that. I still think that the design could be slightly improved to not have the filament go through such a harsh angle. And that plastic gearing, I think they should swap that out in the future. Uh, the nozzle here is a steel hot end, 0.4 millimeters in diameter. So again, very comparable to the type of prints that you're gonna get with the Bamboo Labs printers. Your standard print, 0.2 millimeters thick. You can go down to you know, 0.08, no problem. But I'm going for speed on this printer and size. So the build volume, 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters, over one foot cubed. And that just, I didn't think that would be that big of a difference compared to you know, the 10 inch cube uh, size of the, the Bamboo Labs X1C, but that actually mattered a lot. It just changed the footprint of what I could do. Um, footprint wise, meaning for example, this rocket ship, which I love, is really constrained by the size of this, these fins this, this, uh, on, the, on the bottom here. And 
the height of this plus the footprint fits so comfortably on the K1 Max. And at the speeds that it was just printing at, about 300 millimeters per second, this was three plates of material printed in a day and a half, basically 12 hours for the red parts, 12 hours for the white parts, and additional 12 hours for this base here. On a standard bed slinger, that would have been many more plates, many much slower, it would be basically a week of printing. So that's a pretty big difference when you're talking about printing really big objects. And big objects, you know, I got kids at home, gotta print them up some toys, uh, some towers here, scaling things up to really fill up the that bed volume. That's what I love doing with this. Even just, you know, uh, your flexi toys. Um, here's an example of a skeleton, because we're getting close to the holidays and the Halloween. And this is a design, this size only fit on the K1 Max. I wouldn't be able to print this on the Bamboo X1C because this one went diagonally and it is well over a foot tall uh, when it comes off the bed. So this is the exactly kind of thing that you want to have a large bed size and with larger objects, the Z axis, I mean, all that just changes fundamentally the type of prints I'm thinking that I wanna do with this. Uh, if you have, you know, a smaller FDM printer, it might live really well alongside that. So you get your high detail, small prints on that. And here, think about large prints, mass, small helmets, maybe not astronaut helmets, but easily, you know, you can get your, your Spider-Man helmets, your Iron Man helmets, your Magneto helmets in a printer like this. Um, let's talk about performance and speed though, because while it is rated for up to 600 millimeters uh, of speed, that's really a rare case. Yes, you can do a benchy here in about 16 minutes when it's pre-sliced out of the box. And I hear it's using their uh, Creality Hyper PLA. When you're using generic PLA, you can see in their generic profiles, it's really capping at 250 to 300 millimeters per second. I found a sweet spot in that 275 millimeters per second range. And when you're talking about the extrusion rate, really 14 millimeters per second was a sweet spot for me, uh, even though you can manually push it up to you know, 20 if you want in their slicer. So I don't think it's that order of magnitude faster than your bed slingers. And while technically on, on paper, it is at max speed faster than the Bamboo Labs, the X1C, it's really, I think, very comparable in terms of that. And the print quality I thought was excellent at both you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeters thickness down to 0 0.1 millimeters, 0.16 is what I printed this at, and you're not seeing layer lines. Everything fits together really nicely. The edges kind of fade away. Uh, really happy with print quality, even at the large sizes. And another big difference between this and the Bamboo Lab line of printers is the user experience, the software interface. So I mentioned, you know, the Creality print software, maybe not being the favorite choice of slicer softwares for users. Orca Slicer is my preferred one for here. You do lose with third-party slicers the ability to tap into some of the features like the AI LiDAR uh, and direct to print. But because this is using that Clipper firmware, which is thankfully Creality has now acknowledged and also open sourced their implementation of uh, just recently, just this past two weeks, um, the, you can actually tap into the control of this printer through a web browser. You can do it locally. You don't have to use Creality Cloud. Cloud services are there as a convenience. The Cloud app, I hate. It's like an ad for all their different products. Um, I prefer just using local area network uh, to transfer files over. So you literally open a web browser, type in the, uh, the IP address, the local IP address of the printer, and you have a full web app interface for all your control, Z, Y, X access, turning on the lights, um, activating the hot end, and uploading, importing your G code, as well as then starting and monitoring during your prints, and you can even do that on your phone in a mobile web browser when you're on your home uh, Wi-Fi, which I love, because not a fan of Crowdy Print, not a fan of Crowdy Cloud software, to be honest. There is USB, of course, if you want to manually drag and drop it over and import it in, um, but I just love having that little bit of versatility. Um, so where does this printer kind of live in the ecosystem of FDM printers? Well, in terms of Core XY printers, I think it's, it's as good as reliable as your Bamboo Labs X1C, you know, short of that tubing issue and the extruder, uh, the, when the prints work well, they look great and they can be pretty massive. Uh, the user experience, I think, isn't as polished, both in the software side and the hardware side, as Bamboo Labs. So I wouldn't say this is a printer for 
very, you're, this isn't a great first printer necessarily for someone who just wants something that works. I still think the, the whole overall user experience of the Bamboo Lab printers, especially with the option to do material switching and multi-material printing, you're gonna have that advantage there. But for the price for the bang for buck, the K1 Max being $900, far cheaper than your Bamboo Labs printer uh, with a larger build volume with very comparable build quality and print speeds. Uh, if you are a hobbyist who doesn't mind taking apart your hot end and extruder, doesn't mind using a little bit of janky software uh, or updating the firmware pretty regularly to unlock new features, uh, I would actually very recommend the K1 Max. Now, I can't say exactly the same for the K1 because I know there have been people with issues uh, with that first K1 extruder and hot end, but my experience so far with K1 Max pretty good um, as a workhorse. So this will live alongside the Bamboo Lab printers in our labs for prop printing for holiday ornaments for Halloween goodies. Uh, and if you have questions about the K1 Max, please put them in the comment section below. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. I'm Norm from Tested, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching that video. Your support allows us to make more of this great content. If you'd like to help us on a deeper level even, head over to tested-store.com because we've got stickers. Who doesn't love stickers? Our anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese. Follow the process, not the plan. It's not a process. It's not a problem to solve. It's a process to manage other aphorisms that have come from my mouth. Um, and we have just made a full set of our demerit badges in sticker form. So you can cover your toolbox with all of your screw-ups and celebrate it with other makers. Thank you guys so much. See you next time.